Hey there everyone, post-production Nick here. Guess who forgot to record audio for the entire video? That was me. Anyway, last time on Survival Islands, we did some stuff. This time, look who built a house! Oh yes, with a giant fat off tree in the front garden which will stay there forever. So, as you can see, the wheat farm is gone. I have built a nice house here, made out of wood, of course, with flowers that were taken from boning the grass in that dungeon we spent a couple of videos on. And, of course, the hedges here were taken from our giant fat-off tree with the shears we got from our bonus chest. This is the interior with a lovely patterned floor, crafting tables, beds, furnaces, you name it. A painting crafted using some wool that was left over from one of the chests. I thought it would be a nice touch. Now Jim's house of course had a balcony. This too has a balcony, you know, we're not wanting to be outdone or anything, so that's what we did, build a balcony. You can have a nice view of the lighthouse from here. It's all very nice and mob proof. Now we do have back doors here as well that lead to the victory monument and all of that, and the downstairs area features the storage room and a wheat farm which has got six rows as you can see and eight columns and by my maths six times eight is forty eight which is more than enough to qualify for completing the challenge to build a forty seed wheat farm so uh, achievement get I guess now there is a pressure plate over there in the corner if we go and step on that which I'm sure real-time Nick will do any moment now thank you we get a flood of water to wash the wheat towards us and the redstone for that came from the basement of Jim's house so as you can see in my inventory there I have plenty of redstone and some torches that all came from the basement as well as some lapis and indeed some gold which also came from uh, the basement in Jim's place um, I was only looking for redstone then I found that and thought oh, I may as well go for it so some of the redstone has been put into this farm and there's some left over if we fancy doing anything else so I'm going to leave real time Nick here to plant the rest of his seeds and then we shall pardon me rejoin in a matter of moments so how are we all hope we're all doing well um, yes I feel like a major I repeat major idiot um, the problem was, you see, uh, Liam came over and we tried recording something. Um, and for it to work, what happens is we both record video, but Liam will record the audio. And then on my video, I'll use the audio that Liam recorded. So we both use the same audio. Just It's just a bit of a syncing up job, basically. Um, and I hadn't changed my settings over, which is a bit of a pain, isn't it, really? Because then this happens. Anyway... I should be telling you about this now. This is that huge dungeon. As you can see, I've started ripping out the floor for some reason. I decided it would probably be a good idea to. And we have this fenced off area with a mob spawner in the middle of it. What happens is every so often a bunch of skeletons will spawn. Then we just descend down this ladder to the bottom and there will be bones and arrows waiting for us to pick up. Maybe the occasional bow? Who knows? Uh, what happens is the skeletons drop a maximum of 25 blocks and that's enough to kill them stone dead from whatever height they spawn in. So that's that. That is where I've gotten a huge supply of arrows from because I felt they'd be handy in tackling some of the rooms with blaze in them. This room also kind of doubles up as a giant slime farm because the slimes like spawning in here. So it kind of serves two purposes. Skeletons and slimes. And it's also proved useful for gathering the flowers for my house, as I said earlier. And indeed gathering dirt as well, funnily enough. There's been a huge amount of dirt. And also resources as well. There's been quite a few resources going on all around the place. Um, it was at this point that I decided I'd probably be uh, wise to go and have a look at... Ba uh, ba -der, ba -der, have another look at that gravel pit. Uh, if you remember the one where it was like this giant... Uh, there was just a tiny hole and a giant drop in amongst uh, some gravel floor so I thought after I would gotten the gold obviously you know what with me being a greedy miner uh, we would go and have a look and see uh, if uh, we could tackle that at any point 
um, you know, maybe now that we have arrows, maybe now would be a good time to, you know, da tackle it because we can, we have the advantage of range now. Um, but of course, the problem is I got lost trying to find it, so I'm just kind of dossing about at the moment, hoping to God to find the gravel hole. I was also being put off by the presence of a giant slime up there, as you can see. He was just going. <laughs> all over the place so that was that was kind of putting me off but you know the problem got solved in the end you know in the end I did find it after taking absolutely every single tunnel before finding that one as you can see it's the last tunnel I went down and then we find the gravel here it is and I thought I'll just dig out that bit so I can have a look put a torch up you know so it's a bit bright if I dug out that block let's see how far the gravel falls I then decided it was perhaps too big of a drop to deal with. So, in light of that, I put away everything that we had gathered up to this point and decided it would be a good idea to head over to the island we first went to and try and tackle that dungeon. Um, you know, it didn't seem too difficult. The only thing that put us off last time was the presence of blazes and no real method to take them out with. It also occurred to me I should have brought planks to repair the docks, but I didn't. Now I noticed that chest there, but first I thought it'd be good to get rid of the spawner that I'm sure you've all seen in the background of the videos previous to this. And then I decided to go and deal with the chest, which was empty. I couldn't quite remember whether I had pillaged it or whether it was just an empty chest. However, its usage was confirmed later on, as you will see. So we begin our descent and take out all of the spawners en route. This was something we weren't able to do last time, as we didn't have a pick. And then we come to the blaze spawners right here. So I've begun straight on with that and wasn't quite fast enough. One blaze managed to get out, but we dispatched him with no real difficulty whatsoever. He set fire to us once, but that was enough for us to punch him in the face with an arrow and for him to give us his rod, which was very generous of him. So we continued moving downwards again, just rattling through every spawner that was in our way you know we don't want this to be a tough job creeper spawner right at the bottom thankfully hadn't spawned any in um, but I really wasn't expecting it to be there so it was kind of a hurried take out so there were two bits of sand and those pressure plates under the sign that said hopefully you're standing still reading this um, because these pressure plates well I, I didn't want to find out. I saw the lava dripping from the ceiling and thought that was enough. Uh, <laughs> so, bonus task one. Don't place any blocks in this room. As you can see, it's our favourite, the jumping puzzle. Yeah! Surrounded by lava and instant death and horridness. So, I decided to use that empty chest we found to store absolutely everything. I didn't know whether, you know, this would be the wisest choice. I thought, you know what, I don't want to risk anything. So I just put everything there and begun the perilous hops. And this made me nervous because you can very easily fall off ladders to the side if you are if you approach them at the wrong angle. So this was kind of more nerve-wracking than most jumping puzzles. Um, in fact... It's a shame you didn't get to hear the noises I was making during this because it sounded a lot like <laughs> If you can imagine um giving birth that that's what it reminded me of that's what I was doing throughout this whole jumping puzzle I was literally having babies and this was the final final jump and I made it how cool am I Every jump aced, not a single block placed, bonus challenge completed. Thankfully, that's just a shortcut back to all of our stuff. So I thought it would be very wise for us to head back, grab everything before continuing onwards. You know, if we've been given this opportunity, may as well use it, as I am fairly certain that we're going to need our stuff. So grab me axe out, play our new game, Chest Piñata or something like that, something, I think that's what it's called, it's something like that. Just break the chest, everything explodes, and then gather it all up. It's just a lot easier than going through it all. 
and manually clicking it through. Once we've sorted everything out, we continue back to where we came from just to see what lies ahead. I thought it would be a good idea to take our sword just in case. We nearly triggered a pressure plate there. Wasn't sure what it did, but didn't want to find out. Especially considering the floor in this room was filled with more pressure plates. So I decided against playing chest piñata for some reason on these ones. But nevertheless, I still enjoyed all of the bounty that they granted to me. As you can see, they were quite generous. And then I decided to take the chests. Oh, of course, you know, extra chests will always come in handy, especially if I do for some reason need to extend our storage room. I got curious and decided to see if I could find out what the redstone would have led to. Then I decided that I probably didn't want to know in case I broke something and it set it all off. In any case, I kind of discovered what they were all for anyway. All of those dispensers up there, which I didn't think, you know, would be housing diamonds and pork. So I thought I would have a little bit of an investigation just to see what was in there. And it turned out to be cave spiders. So thankfully, I didn't tread on any of the pressure plates. Although I very nearly trod on those two. <laughs> I decided the safest thing to do would be to stick to the outside edge as there would be no possible way to get the current from a pressure plate there to the dispensers. And then we located the Lello wall. I once had a friend who described who, who couldn't say the word yellow. He always said Lello. Uh, there's an interesting little tidbit for you. Enjoy. Uh, <laughs> and so that was that. I then came through the doors and thought, well, you've gone to all the effort of putting those traps in, you know. I may as well spring one. So I put that brick there just to kind of, as a safeguard, trod down the pressure plate, hurt the spiders, and then got shot by a skeleton, saw the blaze, heard him wheezing, and thought, right, screw that, thank God I was digging up the pressure plates as I went. <laughs> I mean, I think any person would do the same. And finally, we're on the way out. And as I'm about to leave, I think, well, he put the traps there for a reason. Let's have a look and see. So, I wanted to see where the wire went, you know, I thought, where can it go? And, turns out, sure enough, it did actually have something to do with the lava that was dripping from the ceiling. Broke the torch, got out as quickly as I could, turned around, seconds away from incineration. Fortunately, I am a, such a good player that I uh, I happen to avoid such things. I even happen to avoid taking out that skeleton spawner for some reason. But, never mind, because I got it on the way up. Got all the XP out of it, which was very nice indeed. And that pretty much concludes that dungeon. Nice and simple. The only problem being the blaze on the way down, really. That would have been the main issue with uh, doing that one first. Um... But beyond that, you know, you could do that dungeon no problem. I just felt like I wasn't well well enough equipped to deal with it um, when we first approached that dungeon. So how are you enjoying post-production Nick, everyone? Um, I don't think this will be a regular thing. This is just a momentary blunder, one that I hope will never happen again. But anyway, I, I am rambling. Like an old gentleman, overcome with tales of his childhood. You see, back in his day, they didn't have mines or crafting. Everything just occurred. Anyway, welcome back to the house. I thought before uh, continuing onwards, I should go and get some planks and repair the dock on that island. Um just for the simple reason that there is also a bonus challenge about repairing the docks so I thought I'd repair the docks you know may as well try and go for completing all of the bonus challenges um, spy skeleton I shoot him I miss and puncture my own vessel in the traditional way of course because I'm a prat having said that I quickly recover get on the island ready my bow and plaster his face with sharp and pointy projectiles. Boom! As they say. Um, 
somewhere or other. Check the island, put the planks back, discover that there is a boat in my way, and I go about moving that boat. Get out of it, I say. I place my planks, and that is that dock completed. And then we begin the long and arduous sail back to my house. And in this case it is long and arduous because I don't know if you can tell but the boat is kind of spazzing out in weird ways like it's not got a proper turning circle it's not really accelerating it's just, it's not really moving it's kind of just bumping itself along and you know I thought this was a bit weird but I thought you know maybe you know you know Minecraft and entities and the problems it has and all that so maybe you know the game still thinks the boat is stuck uh in the dock that we've just repaired so it's not travelling well enough I see the skeleton, I shoot my arrow, nothing happens so I get out to tackle it hand to hand and yeah uh, <laughs> I get out the boat, teleport back to the dock and am perpetually confused however it did lead me to spot that tiny bit of land in the distance and I thought maybe I should go and have a look of course falling out of my boat is obligatory as is breaking it sometimes. So I sailed over it and began to sang, uh, sang and sing a song or something along the lines of Hey, I just saw you and this is crazy but you look lonely so I have arrived or something like that. It was, it was to that tune. I know, purge me now. But I thought, bleh, whatever. And it turns out there was absolutely nothing there anyway of all the things. Flying leap to the boat as it has a mind of its own and then we just sail back home. Straight back home because you know obviously by this point I had realized I wasn't recording sound. Um, so I thought I'll sail back this will just be by comparison a sort of shorter episode because I wasn't feeling motivated anymore like I just realized I hadn't recorded sound I also recorded an LP episode that hadn't had any sound either so there's about all in all an hour's worth of footage oh and there goes the boat there's about an hour worth of footage that I'd recorded straight today um, and none of it had any audio so I was feeling kind of deflated and just like oh for god's sake don't want to do this anymore I don't want to live um, fortunately I did live otherwise I wouldn't be here now the boat started sailing away so I shot it except I didn't because of something weird so I broke it and the boat broke somewhere else instead this game is weird if you didn't know that already now you do <sighs> anyway to conclude the episode we have one final trip to the storage room in the house just to deposit everything and sort it all out which takes a lot longer than it should do really but nevertheless it is something that we do I need a new storage room design really all my storage rooms look something like this one and I just think to myself eh, it's alright but like is there a better way you know I can't think of a different way I want to do it with chests like one day I'd like to be able to do it with dispensers just have rows of buttons and like you press the button and it dispenses some stuff for you you know that, I mean that, that won't be hard that's something I can do no problems but like you know you need dispensers and redstone and stuff so it's not something you can set up as a storage room either early on or in a custom map really Oh well. I did say to conclude the episode we'd ended in the storage room, but actually, to conclude the episode, we're going to put the yellow wool in the monument and examine our bonus chest for not placing a single block during that jumping puzzle. So here goes the wool. And now we go down to our bonus chest. And of course, we play chest roulette. Chest pinata, sorry. Look at it all. Loads of valuables, including a Flame 1 bow and a Fire Aspect 2 iron sword. 
So maybe, you know, we should have come to this one first, but like I've said countless times, I didn't feel confident or equipped enough to deal with Blaze. Still, it will no doubt come in handy for that other chaotic dungeon. You remember the one behind us where we dived in and there was only one way out, and that was to go through the dungeon. Yeah, that I'm sure it will come in handy there somehow. Or maybe it won't. 